DairyCon 305 Protocols The ultimate goal on any dairy is to produce a quality milk product. By having protocols set up in your dairy comp and using them, they can help you achieve this goal. What is a protocol? A protocol is also sometimes called an SOP or a standard operating procedure. In the terms of dairy, protocols provide instructions for everyday tasks so that all farm employees can easily and consistently complete these tasks the way management wants them done so that a quality milk is produced in the safest and most economical way possible. Protocols help employees make the same decisions that management would if they were there. Protocols are a prescription, just like when we go to the doctor. The purpose of using protocols is so that you can monitor your herd policy decisions and look for opportunities for improvement. You can also monitor individual cow decisions and also look for opportunities for improvement. You can monitor your treatment costs and it also helps with your inventory and drug ordering. And ultimately, it preserves food quality. The process that we use for putting together protocols is a series of steps. And we should have certain people involved in all those steps to make sure that we're successful when setting up our protocols. We want to have the herd owner, the herdsman, the veterinarian, the laborer, the industry people, and anyone else that's important on the dairy that will be working with the protocols. Why do we need these people? First of all, we need them for their knowledge to be able to set the correct protocols up for each event or disease. Then we need to have them there so that for implementation, we want to make sure everyone is on the same page for implementation. Cost considerations, the owner needs to be there in case there's drugs that he may, because of the cost, not want to be using on his dairy. Sometimes facilities also have limitations as far as protocols and whether or not they can do them safely on the dairy. And then it's very important that you have the veterinarian client patient relationship. The veterinarian is there to lay out the protocols and which drugs can be used for each of the different diseases or events. The protocol steps that we use is number one, we first of all determine the disease and the or the events that require medical decisions. When doing this, make sure that you go through and start with all the major events and make the protocols for them first. Then step two, we actually create a definition for each of the events or diseases, and each dairy may be different. Example of that would be a retained placenta. If a cow is considered to have an RP if she has fetal memories that are present more than 24 hours after calving. One that's a little bit more difficult and will vary a lot from dairy to dairy is what is your definition of mastitis? The third step is we want to determine the options available for each of the events or the diseases. When we're doing this, those options don't always have to mean antibiotics. And complicated is not always better. You also need to take into consideration what products you actually want to use and have on the dairy and which ones have the label for those different events or diseases. And last of all is how many choices are you actually going to provide for treatment. Step four is determining the appropriate protocol for each disease or event. And this will involve making a flow chart. And whether it's an actual chart where it's saying uh, you start here, if this happens, you do this. If this happens, you do something else. Showing out in an actual chart. The one that we see the most on the dairies is the written out flow chart, which they actually just have detailed out um, every little step as far as what's going to happen on the dairy. The next thing that we would do would be the step five, and in that we're going to determine uh, an implementation plan and the recording of the usage. We need to get all the employees on the same page for this and standardize our remarks and decide when and how we're going to record that into Dairy Comp. The implementation is actually four simple steps. Uh, we're going to start by making a diagnosis, choosing which protocol we're going to be using for that, and then once we've done that, we're going to follow that protocol to completion. This is very important. It's no different than when you go to the doctor and they give you a prescription and say, even though you start feeling better, complete the prescription. That's the same thing you need to do for each of the protocols. A lot of times when animals get um, taken out of a protocol because they think they're looking better, those are going to be the ones that will return to the hospital pen because they did not completely get cured. And then the last step is once they've completed the protocol to evaluate the animal, they're either going to go back to step one if they're still not cured and decide what you need to do, 
or if they're completely cured, then no tr more treatment will be needed. There are some items that you're going to be need to have in your dairy comp to set up the protocols. And I have them on here so you actually can see the item types in case you need to put them in. And I will be going through that in dairy comp to show you how to set these up. You need to have a milk withhold date, a beef withhold date, last treatment date, previous pen, hospital date, recheck date, total days in the hospital, and then days in the hospital for the current stay. And these all need to be set up in your dairy comp. Most dairy comps will have the majority of these. You may only have to set up one or two of them. Now I'm going to go into dairy comp and I will show you how to go through and set all this up for protocols. One of the first things that you're going to want to do once you get into dairy comp is you want to check and make sure those items that I had listed are all there. So we're going to go to alter backslash two and that will take us into alter and items. And then you can go down through and just MK date. Yep, our milk withhold date is there. BF, that's there. We're going to go down and do a recheck. And I do not have the recheck date in here. So to add any of those that you need to, you click on add. And that's our recheck date is RC date. That is a date, so it's a type 18. And then we're just going to type in recheck date. And then we will save that. And once that is done, then we can actually go into our protocols and we want to make sure under the advanced tab that we actually have all of the items actually set up and mapped. And you'll see in this one they have the milk date and beef date, but they don't have the treatment days. So we're going to, and it usually will hop to the exact same um, item as what you need unless it's not there. So that's our last treatment date. We want to map that. Um, previous pen. We'll put that in there. Recheck date we added. We'll put that in there. And then we have the total days in the sick. And there's the total days in a sick. And so you want to go down through. If you happen to see something like the bottom one here, our milk fever is not defined, go ahead and pick that and actually go through and define that. And see if, they, if this dairy has anything that has to do with milk fever. And you'll see that here it is. We're going to pick it, and now that is um, mapped. So just make sure everything is mapped on there. And then once that's done, we can exit. And now we are into our protocols. The next thing that you're going to be able to do is if you want to add protocols, you'll see that this dairy does have some in here. They don't have a lot. So we're going to click on the Add button. And we have in here quite a few of the, the typical ones. So for instance, if we're doing some dry treating, we have quite a few up here if we're using the spectrum mass. We can pick this one. When you pick it, it should fill in everything. Always double check and make sure that your meat and your milk withholds are correct. And you will see on the dry treatments, they're a little bit different than the other ones because their milk withhold is going to be from the fresh date. So if this is one we wanted to keep, we'll just say OK. And now if you sort these by the type of, of event, we're going to see that we now have the dry in there. Now when we're talking about the actual remarks, we like to keep those standardized. And if we go into the ad, you will see that, for instance, pneumonia is a good example. You'll see that we have the first three letters of the remark is the abbreviation for the drug that's being used. The number that is right after that is going to be the number of days. And then we put a period. And then what's after that is going to be the dosage. And it's really important to try to have a standardized way, especially with all the regulations and stuff that are coming. Uh, we want to make sure that you have something so that you know exactly what drug you treated them with how many days you treated them, and how many cc's you actually treated them with as well. You'll see that this dairy that I have up here now has taken their protocol remark and standardization just one step further. They still are using the abbreviation for the drug. If you look right here, we have the EX, the number two for two days, the dot, and then the 25 cc's. But then you're seeing an II after that. Anytime you have an II in a protocol remark, it will actually prompt you for like the initials. And that is used, um, oh, foot trimming, you can put in the initials of the foot trimmer. This dairy is now using that for the employee that actually treated the animal. And that's something that you're going to have to start keeping track of, so it's kind of a nice thing to be able to put in there. The other thing that will prompt in Dairy Comp, if it's part of a remark, is the QQ. And that is used for either mastitis or for any kind of a lame event. The QQ will prompt you for either a foot or a quarter. 
and the II, anytime you see that, is going to prompt you for two letters for like an initial. So that's a couple ways that you can set that up and have a standardized remark. And again, it's very, very important to have that standardized remark. It allows you to later be able to look at protocols. And like I said, by looking at the cow card, you're going to know exactly what the cow was treated with, how many days she was treated, the amount that she was given. And then in this case, for this dairy, they're also going to know exactly who treated that animal. If you need to add a protocol that is not in our list of protocols, you can simply go to the user defined. First thing is going to be the description. It'll actually be what they're going to pick when the menu pops up. And what I'm going to treat them for is going to be, uh, we're going to put an RP in here. So we go down until we find the RP. And then this is going to be that remark. We want to keep that standardized. So I'm going to put EX and it's going to be for two days. And then we're going to give them 20 cc, so we'll put the 20 after that. And then I'm going to stick with their protocol of putting the II in so that it actually prompts them for who did the treatment. Then we're going to go down. You can have it prompt for the remark where they actually can edit that if they need to. Change the cc's depending on what they give. So you can have a yes there. If you do not want them editing it, you would put a no. Then you can have a destination pen that will automatically move them. Then we need to look at your milk withhold. In this case, we don't have a milk withhold. And our meat withhold is going to be 20 days. And then how many days do we expect to have this animal on the protocol? We're going to say two days. You can put in a treatment cost if you'd like. And then you can also put in the days to recheck if you'd like. And then they will come up on your hospital list as a to recheck. The other thing that you can do down here is if you have one that you're using and you're no longer using it for a little while, you can make it inactive so it will not pop up on the list when they go to treat the animals. Certain treatments that are only for adult animals or only for heifers, you can limit them by saying no, not for adults or no, not for heifers. Once you're done, you just simply say OK. The other thing that you can do is enter in details if you want them to be told specific things each day. This is a good example of that. You'll see they clicked on the details. And then down below in their details, they're saying on day one, of course, they're going to be treating them. On day two, they're saying no treatment. On day three, no treatment. And then on day four, they're going to get the second treatment and evaluate them. On mastitis treatments, the standardization of the remark is a little bit different. If we go to, for instance, this one, the spectra, we have the standardization is the abbreviation of the actual drug, the number of days, and then we have the QQ, which is going to be the quarter, and then after that we have a dot and then a blank. And typically what you do there is you're going to put in the severity. And the severity is going to be a number one, meaning that they're off of milk. Number two is that they're off milk with a hard quarter. And number three is that they're off milk with a hard quarter and they're also sick. So that's typically the standardized format for the ones that are the mastitis one. To create the reports in Dairy Comp, there's uh, basically usually three different hospital lists that people will use. This is the first one. These may be the animals that you're going to want to have a list of to test for antibiotics. The next report that uh, a lot of times will be run is going to be a hospital list of your animals that are treated not all in one pen. You may need to find them throughout a couple different pens. This, because we have the last treatment date of greater than a negative two, this will be all the animals that are needing be treated. And it doesn't matter what pen they're in. It's going to tell you the date, what they're being treated for, and then what type of treatment they're supposed to be getting today. And then this one is in the day one of a two-day treatment. There's one other report. If you have all your animals in one hospital pen, you can do it just by pen. When we run this, we're going to get everybody that's in that hospital pen. And again, this one is showing that this animal, this is when she was treated. Uh, this is her mastitis is what she actually was treated for. Now so you're seeing an OK question mark, which means that animal is, is up to be looked at to find out if she's OK to put back into the milking string or if you need to start your treatment over. So those are basically the three reports that people will use for your um, hospital list, whether it's all one pen, whether you need to find them throughout, or if you're just looking for the ones that need to be tested for antibiotic residue. 
Once you've been using protocols, you also can go into guide and get a lot of good information as far as what protocols are being used, any changes in them. The graph that I have up right here is showing what they're using. Some of the dairies I've seen where they start using something different, you can see on these graphs immediately. Another one you can look at is going to be looking at if they have had subsequent cases. Green means that they did nothing. They didn't have to treat them again. The orange means that they re repeated the exact same protocols they did the first time. And the red means that they changed it up and did something else. And the yellow you're seeing across the very, very top says unknown. Those animals are not around anymore, so they don't have a known out. You can also use pocket cow cards for doing your protocols. Um, you'll be able to see the same thing there, what days they are in the protocol, what they're actually supposed to be treated with. And if you do need to enter in um, treatments, you can go ahead and do that from your pocket cow card as well. So in summary, make sure you start with a clear plan when putting your protocols together. The setup in Dairy Comp, you use your alter. Make sure that you standardize those remarks. It's going to be drug, days, and dose. Unless you're doing a mastitis, then it will be drug days, quarter, and severity. You can use the II for initials of who actually did the treatment, or the QQ is for the quarter or the foot. This assists your management in guiding your treatment decisions, and it helps achieve our ultimate goal of quality milk.